smile on your face, including Brooke, and that's really sad. Because you're making fun of me, and it's fine. It's fine. My self-esteem can handle it. Oh, great. So harass Bennett. Something new and exciting for me. This has never occurred. Oh, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So I'm going to show you a question, and you are going to answer it on your whiteboard. You're going to do it individually. Once I have pretty much everyone's answers, then I will give you, if most of you have it right, I'll tell you to talk, I'll give you the answer. If not, then we'll go from there. All right, so question one. As soon as you have it, put it up on your board. No, just write A. Yeah, no. Aaron, let's make our life simple. The answer is, show me what you got. Answer, okay. Okay, answer is what, Brogan? A. a, a compulsion. All right, here we go. Let's look at 10. The answer, we've got a lot of answers out there. Turn to your neighbor, discuss. You have 10 seconds. Figure it out. You really don't. I'll be your buddy. What do you have? Safe? No. It's not safe. Because it's the wrong answer. Oh, it is safe. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, show me what you got. The answer is C. C. The answer is C. Let's look at 13, please. <coughs> One. The answer is what, Rory? Uh, D. D. There we go. All right. What? Can I just ask you any questions I want, or am I supposed to be in content? Can I ask you anything I want? Yeah. Ah. Here we go. <laughs> this is our last year together. We have two more weeks of content together, and then we are done. Is this how you really want to end it? <laughs> Six. You're supposed to put a little effort in like showing me your answers. The answer is what, Margo? C. All right, let's look at five. <coughs> no, actually, I thought it was a good question. In cognition, you guys were, did terrible on your mock exams on, so thank you. <laughs> What is it? Show me what you got. What is it? Quentin. E. You guys also did terrible on history. So let's look at the history one. Three, please. Faster, man. You don't have this much time on your exam. One, show me what you got. The answer. We got a lot of. I have almost every letter represented. Turn to your neighbor. You got five seconds. Five. You got Marie now. Come to a consensus. Five. Four. Three. 
Two. One. Show me what you got. Oh, my God. I think this went the other way. This went the other way. The answer is what, Nina? E. Okay. Behavioral psychologist is most likely to study. Okay. Look at A. Perceived locus of control. Why would a behavioral... Behaviorists don't care what's going on inside your head. They don't. Okay. B. Formation of emotional attachments. They don't care why you like what you like. C. Defense mechanisms used. Defense mechanisms is by psychoanalytic, not behaviorist. D. Genetic basis. Please. Behaviorists don't care about your DNA. It has to be E. Token economies, which is all about um, motivation and all that stuff. Everyone good? Does that make sense? All right. Here we go. Uh, let's do... Oh, let's do nine. We love history. Five, four, three, two. I have literally every letter up. Talk to your neighbor, come to a consensus. Go, talk to your neighbor. Nope. <coughs> Five. Come to a consensus. I think we got more wrong answers here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Five. Four. Three. Show me what you got. Two. One. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Here we go. So, following. Nope. Uh, introspection is practiced by early structuralists is best illustrated by which of the following behaviors. Okay. Describing one's immediate sensations while looking at a rose. It's not awful. B. Determining the best way for children to learn in school. Is that what early structuralism is all about? No. It can't be B. Conditioning an infant. No. Conditioning is not structuralist at all. That's behaviorist. D. Recalling one's unconscious desire. That's psychoanalytic. Cannot be D. E, creating intelligence tests? That doesn't happen until way later, and that's cognitive psychologist. So the only rational answer is? A. A is the only rational answer. It's not a great answer. It's not one that I would jump out and say, oh, introspection. But when you sit there and rationalize all the other ones, it has to be the right choice. Oh, let's do an emotion one. We love emotions. 11, please. Kayla. Introspection is thinking about your own thoughts and kind of thinking about your own thoughts and how you feel about your own thoughts and analyze that breaking down. So describing one's immediate sensations while looking at a rose is thinking about how you actually feel about a rose. Introspection. Huh? You have to do it immediately. If you do it at a different time, it's called retrospection, not introspection. Three. <coughs> Three, two, one. The answer is talk to your buddy because we have every letter represented. <laughs> so come to a consensus. Talk to your buddy. It's not. You're wrong. <laughs> Five. Show me what you got. Four. Three. Two. I have a 50 50 split. Oh, we're killing it today, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. Number 11. Okay, according to Stanley Satcher and Jerome Singer's theory of emotion, which of the following is true? A. Same physiological response can produce different emotions depending on the context in which the response occurs and a person's interpretation of that context. That sounds pretty good, correct? So we'll leave it. Environmental events triggers physiological responses from the muscles, which in turn activate specific emotional states. That sounds pretty good, too. We'll leave it. C. Emotional experiences and physiological responses are initiated at the same time. Cannot be. That's... D, specific hormonal, no. E, feedback, no. So we're stuck between A and B. Wait, what's C? C? Oh, that's going to be your Cannon Bard. Yeah, that's Cannon Bard. Was Shots the first one the one with the lion? Yes. All right, the answer is A. 
The answer is A. Alright. Um, ooh, states of consciousness. You better get these right. You guys are good at this stuff. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Yes. Three. Two. Oh, we got our confidence boost back. Yes. What is it, Bar? Hey. All right, here we go. Let's do 17. Come on, come on. Are we on a roll? Are we on a roll, ladies and gentlemen? Are we on a hot streak? This is what happens when I talk crap. Nina! Tip a tongue, absolutely. All right. Yep, let's do 19. Let's look at a chart. There we go. Three. Two. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, we are untouchable. We are three for three. I mean, we're really like, like eight for three, but that's fine. But look at us. Look at us go. Marie, what is it? Endocrine system. Endocrine system. This is getting wild. Absolutely wild. All right, let's do 25. You people hate <laughs> cognition. I love watching your faces as you read it. You're like, ah. <laughs> Not your prettiest faces reading cognition questions. Are we breaking the street? Yep, we got every letter represented already. Talk to a buddy. Every letter was up. I guess I know. I know. I learn symbols. Five, four. Oh God. Oh God. Twenty-five. Oh God. All right. Yeah. No, you're all wrong. Pretty much. Oh my god, that would have been so bad. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so bad. You would never for, you would never let me forget that. All right, here we go. So, pretty much all of you are horrifically wrong. It's fine. We'll figure it out. So, when you are coming across one that you are just completely confused, ladies and gentlemen, um, on your weekly test, you are not allowed to uh, write on the test, but you are more than welcome to write on your scantrons, yes? Okay, on your AP exam, they're going to burn your test books when they get them back in California. So you write on it, draw on it, do whatever the hell you want. So just scratch them out right there. Okay, so according to Chomsky, understanding a sentence involves which of the following transformation between structures. So perceptual to functional. I mean, what the hell does that mean? No, can't be it. Okay, so um, what is... Uh, symbolic to analytic. That sounds pretty good because letters are symbols. Words are symbols. I'll take it. B's not horrific. Simple to complex. No. No. What the hell does that mean? Surface to deep. When you read something, then you have to process its meaning. And E, pragmatics to syntactic. No. That's right. All right, so we're stuck between B and D. Symbolic to analytic to surface to deep. Surface is reading something. Deep is actually understanding its whole process and how it works. The answer is D. Surface to deep is Chomsky. Think about it. How many, time, how many words have you read in your life? How many words would you actually say you really comprehended and you really understood exactly what they were talking about doing? I mean, how many books have you read that you were like, what the hell just happened? Exactly. All right. So, when in doubt, always sit there and scratch it out, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's do 26 since we're here. What? Sure. <coughs> Lily, you're doing 26. How's it going? Not well. Well. 
Three, two, one. Oh, we're back on our our win streak. Here we go. The answer is what, Chloe? E. e. All right, I want to keep this streak going. Let's try 20. You like stay subconscious. We did this one, didn't we? Let's go personality. We're going personality anyway, 24. Three, two, the answer is what, bar B? <coughs> Underdeveloped superego. Underdeveloped means it's not there, ladies and gentlemen. And superego deals with your right and your wrong. All right, here we go. Let's do, ooh, I love PJ. Let's do a little PJ for us. 27. No. Three, two, one. I've got every letter represented. Talk to a buddy, figure it out. Go. Talk to your buddy. Um, I think no, it's just, it was the last Five, four, three, two, one. What do you got? Let me see. All right, sort of. All right, we're better. All right, the answer is E. Now, when you ever have it in a list like this, ladies and gentlemen, and they're out of order, which they're not. They're not. They're missing one. Four? Is there four or five? There's four. Conservation is not one. It's a part of operational. What I would do is I would write one, two, three, four, and write them next to them. Okay? Even if they're in order, out of order, I would always do it, and that makes it easier to process, especially if you're getting tripped up. Yes? Every time you see it, whether it's an Erickson thing, whether it's... Um, a PJ kind of thing, I would always sit there and do it. All right, let's do 28. How'd it go? How was your EOC? Oh, sorry, I didn't even look at your pass. I did rip it up, though. <laughs> 28. The answer is C. Oh, I would like to do this one. This one looks fun. Thirty-one and thirty-two. Let's do thirty-one and thirty-two. Three, two, I have one right answer so far. I have two right answers. All right, four, number one, uh, 31. What type of graph would a researcher use to re represent this data? The answer is a scatter plot, ladies and gentlemen, a scatter plot. Okay. 32, which of the following statistic best appro approximates the relation between the variables? The answer for that is D. The answer for that is D. All right. Um, let's do 33. What? <coughs> you would have to sit there and figure out the math kind of cool. No, I know. It's kind of dirty. But good thing is, you don't have to get 100 
to get a perfect, to get a five? The answer is 33 is A. 34, let's do that one. You love history. <clears throat> You're going to see that there are going to be some questions that are just really, 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 really hard. They're there as a test. You're going to see some questions that are incredibly, incredibly easy, and those are supposed to be gimmies. So you're going to have them on both ends of the spectrum. They have like three, two or three that are always incredibly hard. Of course, I picked one. All right, 34. The answer is what, Abigail? B. B. All right, let's go. I said E. Oh, the answer is E. Okay. We're good. It's E. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> Julian, you are all over my case today. <laughs> all right, let's do 38. <coughs> the answer is what, Quentin? C. C. Let's do 35. Carly, I need you playing with me. So you should probably put the Barron's book down for a minute. Not that I don't appreciate it. I know that's a lie. <laughs> You're going to lie. Do better. All right. The answer is what, Nina? <coughs> e. All right. 41. Answer is what, Brooke? D. D. Love sensation. Nice. Let's do 42. <coughs> the answer is what, Maya? D. Opponent process theory. On your whiteboards, please tell me what. Yes. Which of the following best depicts the relation between performance and arousal? Performance and arousal. Three, two, one. The answer is what, Chris? A. Because with low arousal, you have low performance. If you literally don't care, do you put that much effort in? No. But the more interesting it is, the higher your performance. However, if it's too much stress, what do you do? You start crashing. You start going back down. Okay? So... When you, no one who has low arousal has high performance. You know, like, I don't know if you do your best thinking while lying on the couch after your fourth hour of watching something on Netflix. Can we agree? It's not really your best thinking time. All right. How much time do I have? Boss. All right, let's do, oh, I love, I love your faces when you look at a cognition question. Let's do it. 51, please. You all get your cranky faces on. And I'm seeing them now, and they are awesome. Oh, gosh. You've got the alphabet already. Three. Turn to your buddy. Ask. Go. We got the whole damn alphabet. Five, four, three, two. Show me what you got. Fifty-one, please. Oh, some of you went the other way with it. Like a lot of you went the other way with it. All right, here we go. 
When the stimuli in a task occur in highly predictable ways, an individual is often able to attend to both the task and another one at the same time. Hello. Sitting in a class, are you able to respond to a text and still kind of carry on with what's going on in class? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can. Because it happens all the time that you're being tested that way. Because you are always on your damn phones. When this occurs, the processing of the first task, 51, okay, is it controlled? If you're doing it all the time, is it controlled? Is any task ever controlled? No, absolutely not. Is it automatic? Well, you do it all the time. Every time your phone goes off, who here, every time their phone makes a vibration or a noise, you have to look at it immediately and you like do it without even thinking? Yeah, exactly. Top down. How is it? Are you saving the world? Are you thinking big picture here, people? No. Are you going bottom up? Are you looking at the details of things and going up to like, no. Sequential? Sequential? The answer is automatic. All right. Let's do learning. 52, please. The answer is what, Marie? Oh, B. B. Oh, I do love the little diagrams. Yes. This is so exciting. Yeah, I told you, you're not always going to have the wonderful little same language. Remember, every book's different, so sit there and figure it out. Don't freak out. If you see a word you don't know, sit there and try to figure it out. Uh, attention teachers and students, pardon the interruption. Just a reminder that caps and announce and graduation announcements will be passed out during lunch today, tomorrow, and Friday. Thank you. Interesting, interesting. All right, the answer is D. For 55, it's the whole thing. Instead of calling it the synaptic knob or whatever they want to call it, it's called the synaptic cleft is the outside. All right, uh, 56. 56. Yes, there we go. What is it, Kayla? See, just because you may not know the words doesn't mean you don't know the answer. Sit there and figure it out. Have the confidence that we may have not taught you that word, but we have taught you enough to figure it out. Yes? Hello? Yeah. Always a pleasure, AP Psych. Always a pleasure. Have a nice day, Chris. Marie, have a good day, sweetie. Thank you. Goodbye, Bailey. Bye. Always a pleasure, Bailey.